This is the word of God. Some say Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Some will say Jesus. And some will say the good news because that's what the gospel means. And they're all right, but it even goes deeper than that. Gospel is basically God's testimony. In 1 John 5, 9, it says, If we receive human testimony, God's testimony is greater, because this is what God testified. He had testified about his son. This is the New Testament that we're explaining. From the birth of our Savior to the death, burial, and resurrection. But did you know that you're a walking gospel as well? We all have a relationship with we all who have a relationship with Christ are walking gospels for the glory of God. We have a story to tell of faith, forgiveness, power, and love. How broken became beautiful and how the light of life shined. And we all seen what sin does to life, right? So our testimony leads people to the gospel of Christ. And if we rewrite that, our good news, our gospel, leads people to God's good news, Jesus. But if we dig deeper, we can then verify that the New Testament was, in, was indeed good news. But didn't the Old Testament point to this good news? The Old Testament was God's plan and works to bring the good news to existence. So the gospel is the complete story of God's redemption. 1 Corinthians 15, 3, 4 says, For I delivered to you first of all that which I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. That's basically what our belief is in, right? But this verse is not just asking you, and it's not asking you to believe. This verse is telling you that not only did God do this, but he did it to the detail of the scriptures. So if we look at this and we see that word first, what is first? What is uh, first in priority in our lives? The easiest way I would say to do, say this is joy. Jesus, others, and you. And if we put Jesus and in others before our own selves, we will find that joy. Jesus is the first, but not just Jesus. Jesus is love. For that love, he gave his life for us. So that is why we should put others before us as Jesus has put himself before us. I mean, yeah, put us before himself. Then we should put our families or others and then do for our family and ourselves. Uh, the Bible tells us that we should be humble and heart ourselves and become servants. Revelation 2, um, yeah, chapter 2, verses 2 through 4 is about the loveless church. It says, I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And you have tested those who say they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience and have labored for my name's sake and have not become weary. And if we stop right there, that sounds like a regular good Christian. It sounds like somebody doing it right. But verse 4 says, Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. And to be honest, there's many Christians out there, this is a picture of them. We're too caught up on doing that we forgot about being. We can all say we believe in Jesus, and we can say that we love Jesus. But if we do not put him first in everything, then it does not matter what we do, our works, any of it. If you love Jesus, you will obey him. If you love Jesus, you will follow him. And if you do these, then you will put him first in your life. The church of Ephesus served his word, bared fruit, honored, and worshipped him. But they lost focus on putting him first in their life. We are all accustomed to the daily tasks of life. Waking up, getting kids ready, get us ready, head to work, do our job, 
just to return home, cook dinner, get homework done, et cetera, et cetera. The list can go on. The last thing, um, the list, well, where did we take time for God? Where did we help others? We did it all for us, even though it doesn't always seem like it was for us. Well, now you see that there isn't enough time in a day. But what I learned is when you wake up, drop to your knees and pray. God first. Then start your day, and then at lunch, take a quick moment to pray. Just thanking God for getting you through the first half of the day. As Pastor Richie always says, prayer doesn't have to be that long. It's just a relationship between you and your Heavenly Father. Um, and then after work is the real war. Kids, dinner, homework, etc. And the time is ticking away. And most of us, actually, by the time we get it done, we realize that we can get about five hours of sleep before we have to do it over again. But putting God first, you have someone that's taking away obstacles throughout your day. Um, so smoothing your day out. Trust in him, for he will guide you. Help people if you pass them. Look out for neighbors. Love people through the day. And that's the tough one, love people through the day. Because a lot of people that you may meet during that day aren't very lovable. So um, I lost my spot. Start your day with God and keep God with you throughout the day. So what if you're driving home and feel like talking to your Heavenly Father? It's not like other drivers haven't seen you talk to yourself before, right? Many of us sing to songs and stuff. So there should be no reason why we can't keep God in touch with God throughout the day. So the question is, why do we need the gospel? Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jews first, and also to the Greek. So if we look at this, it says, The gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation for all. We need it because it's the power of God. The power of knowledge, the power of salvation, the power of strength, the power of courage it is a gift to us, and without it, we are condemned. The gospel is our only hope. John 3, 16 through 21. Everybody knows this one, right? <clears throat> for God loved the world in this way. He gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world, condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Anyone who believes in him is not condemned, but anyone who does not believe is already condemned, because he has not believed in the name of the one and only Son of God. This judgment is this is the judgment, the light has come into the world, and people love darkness rather than light. Because their deeds were evil. For everyone who does evil hates light, the light and avoids it. So that his deeds may be exposed. May not be exposed. But anyone who lives by the truth comes to light so that his works may be shown to be accomplished by God. So in verse 18, it says, Anyone who believes in him is not condemned. But anyone who does not believe is already condemned. God's clearly saying that we are already condemned. We have no hope, and the only way out is to believe. In verse 19, it clearly tells us that we hate God. Men love darkness rather than light. Hate may seem like a, um, a pretty tough word, but if we really think about it, what's the opposite of love? And everybody's going to say hate, but it's really sin. Without God, you have darkness, which is saying if you practice evil, you hate me. It says for everyone who does evil hates the light and avoids it. Romans 3, I don't have this one. Okay, I'll just read this. Romans 3, 10 through 18 says, as it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. There is none who understands. There is none who seeks after God. They have all turned aside. They have together become unprofitable. There is none who does good, no, not one. 
Their throat is an open tomb. With their tongues, they have practiced deceit. The poison of ash is under their lips, whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. Their feet are swift to shed blood. Destruction and misery are in their ways. In the way of peace, they have not known. There is no fear of God before their eyes. Now, just hearing that and looking outside these doors, the world, that's a description of the world that we live in today. We are all sinners, and the result of sin is evil days. Even if you're a believer, you're still a sinner. We are to crucify our flesh every day so we don't do these evil deeds. But it's a battle. So we're going to try to finish up with a few scriptures, and then we'll sum it all up. I think I have this. Where did they all go? I don't have this one either. Oh, I did have them. My bad. Now we know that whatever the law says, it speaks to those who are under the law. In order to shut every mouth and make it so the whole world has to answer to God, it follows that no human being, it follows that no human being will be treated as righteous in His presence by doing what the law says, because the knowledge of sin comes through the law. But now God's righteousness has been revealed apart from the law, which is confirmed by the law and the prophets. God's righteousness comes through the faithfulness of Jesus Christ for all who have faith in him. There's no distinction. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God or God's glory. Romans 5.12 Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man and death through sin, in this way death spread to all people because all have sinned. Romans 10.8-13 But what does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. This is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confesses is made uh, unto salvation. For the scripture says, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew uh, Jew and Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So when we looked at Romans 3.19, it was telling us that the knowledge of sin comes from the law. Because the law, the Ten Commandments, we shall not covet. So, if we put ourselves back in that spot, or before we became believers and we're a non-believer, we know that when we do something wrong, it's wrong. We don't need a set of laws to tell us that's wrong. So, we already know if we're messed up. And then God comes along with these laws just to show us that we're more messed up than we think. Laws that say, you know, things that we already should know not to do. But God's saying that if you even break one of them, you broke all of them. You're really messed up. So why would God do something like that? It's so that we know, and the more that we know we are wrong and sinners, the more we know we need a Savior. And that Savior is Christ. Romans 5.12 that we read showed us that. And in Romans 10.8-13, it told us how to be saved in the blood of Jesus. Jesus. So we start with a war between good and evil. God had to fix the mess that Satan um, made. We cannot have a world sin forever. So the gospel is a story of how God did that. He gave us commandments to open our eyes where we stand and show us that we are unworthy. He had prophets guide us to know that there will be a Savior coming. Then in times of terrible things, he puts flesh on and comes down to earth as man, and he carries his own wrath and died for us. Remember in the book of Genesis, Noah's days, the rainbow, the promise that the rainbow represents? God said, I place my bow. I know some translation will say rainbow, 
But when we really think about it, and during this time, they've never experienced rain before. Well, it's not recorded anyway. So when God said, I place my bow, it's had to be something that represents something that they know of. And the only bow they would know of at that time is a warrior bow. So we have a rainbow today. What direction is that rainbow pointing? Pointing up. God promised not to destroy the earth with a flood again, so he placed a symbol of that promise. And that symbol was saying, um, instead of me putting my raft on you, I will put it on me. That rainbow was a covenant that he will fix this. He saved us from sin, and that is what we call true love. Jesus came and took our sin and nailed it to the cross, and he died in our place. And that was the love that he had for us, and that was God fulfilling his promise to take the wrath of our sin and give us righteousness upon himself. God killed sin with the blood on that cross, and God says, I'm giving you my righteousness due to yours will never be good enough. That is what we call salvation. His righteousness saves us from our sin. And I got another scripture before we finish this off. James 2.19 says, You believe that there is one God. How did I get so far ahead? You believe that there is one God. You do well. Even the de uh, demons believe and tremble. So, Many might believe in God. Many might read the Bible. But if we really read the Bible, then we will know that the demons even know the scripture. The demons even believe in God. So what makes us different than them? The difference is that we submit and we obey. The difference is that when we believe, we don't tremble. We rejoice. We grow in that relationship. When Jesus was hung on the cross and gave up his last breath, the, tour, the uh, veil of the Holy and Holies was ripped apart. And that veil was to separate us from God because we were sinners. And that being ripped away, that gave us full access to the throne of God. That gave us back our relationship with God. And if we're Christians and we're not really walking in relation with God, then we're doing something wrong. As I always like to say, is there's po um, professing Christians and possessing Christians. Those who prayed the salvation prayer and those who prayed and believed in their hearts. Or versus those who prayed and believed in their hearts. Because our sin is a heart issue. Anytime we do evil deeds, it's from the heart. So if our sin is a heart issue, then our salvation needs to be from the heart as well, not just words. Gospel is completed story of God's redemption. It's completed because when we read Revelations, it tells us that we already won. And that's all I got for you guys today. And as we 